Hello and welcome. My name is Sahan Shalabi and I'm one of the technical solution specialists for Cisco Plus Secure Connect. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to provision the remote access service to allow all of our remote workers to connect to our corporate network. Right now, I'm on the Secure Connect remote access setup page, and we can see there are already been a couple of things that have been set up for us. We've already enabled application connectivity by connecting some of our sites or virtual resources to Secure Connect. And we've also configured and provisioned our users with our selected identity provider. From here, I'm going to select configure the remote access service. And this is going to cross launch me to the umbrella dashboard in order to be able to complete the configuration. Once the page loads, you'll know that there's going to be a configure button in the middle. I'm going to select this and it will start by asking us for our network configuration. This is where we'll specify the IP address of our private DNS server, which we use to resolve some of our internal applications. We'll also specify our default domain name and the DNS names for the moment are optional. I'm going to select next and it's going to ask me about traffic steering. This is essentially split tunneling. So you have additional control over deciding which traffic either goes through the VPN tunnel or break out of the VPN tunnel. We might do something like steer traffic outside of the tunnel and certain applications such as video and VoIP, we might want to have break out of the tunnel in order to make sure that users are having a good experience with their video or VoIP application. We also have the option of specifying a DNS mode, choosing how we want our DNS traffic to actually get to Umbrella or your organization. We either leave it as default, so just have all of the traffic going through the Umbrella roaming client as an example, or we can tunnel all of our DNS traffic through the VPN as well. Next, I have the option of client configuration. This page essentially gives you options on how you want the VPN clients to behave once it's been installed on an end user's device. Auto connect on starts essentially has the VPN client start up once a user logs into their device and then start to form that VPN connection so that all of their traffic is secured right from the get-go. Auto reconnect kind of does what it says on the tin. If the VPN tunnel does drop for whatever reason, we're going to attempt to reform that connection to make sure that all of that traffic is kept secured. Allowing a manual host input allows end users to select the host name of the destination where this VPN session is going to terminate to. And there are also a couple of additional options over here, such as the post authentication banner. And if you're using any RDP protocols, there are additional settings at the bottom as well. The last option in the provisioning is selecting the regions that we want our cloud delivered VPN to actually operate in. So from here, I'm just going to select North America and you'll see that we have four different data centers to choose from. From here, I'm going to type in the IP address ranges of where users are going to pull IP addresses from and this is how they're going to be identified once connected to your corporate network. I'm going to go ahead and type in a couple of IP address ranges over here. We want to make sure that these aren't overlapping with each other, as well as anything else in your corporate network. Then once I've entered those, I'm going to select provision. Once that's done, it's now going to provision the remote access service piece. And you'll note that it's actually taking me back to the remote access setup page that we were originally on when we started. Now, there is one additional step. We've configured the service itself, but we actually need to specify which users are actually going to be able to connect to our service. And this is why we already have the users pre-provisioned. Now that we're back on the remote access setup page, we're going to go back to edits configuration just to take us back to the umbrella dashboard where we can specify those users. At the top right, we'll see that there is a settings option. This is what we're going to select to choose those users who will be able to connect. And you'll note that there's now an assign users and groups section. From here, I'd be able to select either all of my Active Directory users. If we're also using groups as well, I could select those groups. Or if I just wanted to specify specific individuals or groups, I could select the number that's associated with the users or groups and just select from specific users. Once that's done, I'll hit save, and those users that I've selected will be the only ones actually allowed to join the corporate network through the VPN. That's all we have for you today. Thank you very much for joining. Please be on the lookout for future videos, and all the best. Take care.